growth at a reasonable price. GARP, I mean, it sounds like an easy con concept. Is it easy to find stocks that fit those metrics? At the moment, I think it, it is fairly easy. You know, we, we've got such a bifurcated market with, you know, some of the high flyers with, frankly, no earnings. So you can't really call those Garpy. Uh, and then you've got, you know, maybe some really, really cyclical ones or, you know, things that just aren't growing or are just dividend plays. So you're trying to hit right in the middle. But like I said, you're actually, I think, because of the sell off you know, since the beginning of the year, you're able to scour through and find some things that I think over the long term will grow, but yet you're not paying some outrageous price for. Yeah, and let's get into some of those because when I hear about a stock or a company that has never in its history as a public company traded at that low of a valuation, kind of the radar goes off. That's actually what's happened to Meta Platforms, a.k.a. Facebook. It's gotten just destroyed yeah. this year, but you like it. I do. I mean, I think you got to live through, you know, I think of it as a, you know, a brand that goes through a tough time. I think back in the days of buying McDonald's when there was Mad Cow and everyone decided no one was going to go to McDonald's again. Um, Meta is in one sense easier in the sense that they still haven't seen user counts fall. So I would start to get worried if you had users falling. But I think a lot of the issues are, you know, I think it, they're well known, right? TikTok is eating some of their lunch in terms of, you know, eyeballs spending more time there. Uh, and then also some of the Apple privacy changes. But in the long run, it is a social network company. But in the long run, really, it's an advertising company, right? So if they have the eyeballs, I truly believe the earnings will follow. So um, I think that one is, you know, at, like you said, the lowest valuation since it came public. You know, again, you're going to probably have to suffer for a while. I have no idea when the turn comes, but yeah. I think you're going to get rewarded. Yeah, you just wonder if they've lost their focus from Facebook to Meta and all the virtual reality stuff. Maybe people don't like it. We'll see. Um, don't drink and go in virtual reality, I guess. But we're going to combine the two here because it's safe. Anheuser-Busch, Bud, you kind of view this as a safe investment. I do. You know, they're, you know, amazing brands, right? You know, you, everyone knows the Budweiser. You got Stella Artois. Um, you got Corona outside of the U.S. Uh, so phenomenal global brands, biggest brewer in the world. What's really, you know, you might say, well, then why is their stock so cheap? Well, the problem is input costs are very expensive uh, right now for really beer makers in general. Um, the good news is Anheuser-Busch being the biggest has the most leverage to, to really deal with that, but it's still crimping their profits at the moment. Um, you know, phenomenal franchises around the globe. So if you think eventually you'll see some relief from that, and I think you will, uh, obviously I think earnings will in fact then rebound and you're getting it, you know, again, a great branded company that yeah. I would also mention is, is recession resistant. And we just do not see alcohol consumption going down during recessions. You know, you might trade down from, uh, you know, Bud to uh, uh, to something else, uh, Bush or something, um, but you typically keep drinking. Maybe some of us drink more uh, if it's a bad enough market.